Welcome to Intro to Cellular Respiration. Make sure you change the quality of your video to 240p so the bandwidth of the high school can handle all the videos playing at one time. At about halfway through the video, I'm going to ask you to fill out your notes. But right now, just kind of watch the video and pay attention to the content. So what is cellular respiration? The purpose of cellular respiration is to use glucose to produce a bunch of ATP. And that process happens in the mitochondria. As you remember, the mitochondria is considered the powerhouse of the cell because it takes a chemical energy stored in glucose and makes a bunch of chemical energy that's more usable format in the form of ATP. So who does cellular respiration? Is it plants? Is it animals? Is it fungi? Is it bacteria? Well, actually, all living things undergo cellular respiration. Now, why do they do this? Because all living things need ATP to drive the chemical reactions within their cells. Now, a lot of kids are under the misconception that plants do photosynthesis, therefore animals must be the only ones who do respiration. And that's not entirely true. And while it's true that we heterotrophs don't do photosynthesis, we can't make our own food, every living thing needs ATP. That means every living thing has to undergo cellular respiration of some sort. So in other words, plants respire and so do animals. And why do organisms need all of this ATP? ATP is required for making essential molecules like carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, proteins, those macromolecules of life. Without the usable energy stored in ATP, our cells cannot generate these important macromolecules. And ATP is used for driving many other cellular activities as well, including active transport. What is the equation for cellular respiration? Now, just as I had you remember the equation for photosynthesis, I also want you to remember the equation for cellular respiration. So let's take a look at it and start memorizing it right now. Remember, the purpose of cellular respiration is to turn the energy stored in glucose into a bunch of ATP. And when oxygen is present, the mitochondria can do that very well. So let's look at the big entire formula now. Glucose plus oxygen gas produces carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. If we abbreviate that in the chemical equation, glucose is C6H12O6. Oxygen gas is 6O2, meaning six molecules of oxygen gas. That is converted into six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water and a bunch of ATP. And I hope that you notice it looks very familiar. It looks much like photosynthesis except for the exact reverse. So I'm going to repeat it one more time and you follow along trying to memorize as I go. Ready? C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gets converted into 6CO2 plus 6H2O and ATP. So because these two things, glucose and oxygen, on the left side of the arrow, they are the reactants. And on the right side of the arrow, these three things are the products, CO2, water, and ATP. They're the exact opposite reactants and products of photosynthesis. So let's take a look. In photosynthesis, light energy is coming into the system to drive the production of glucose. So here's our light energy. And when that's available, we'll use six molecules of CO2 and six molecules of water to produce one molecule of glucose plus six molecules of oxygen gas. So if photosynthesis is the opposite of cellular respiration and photosynthesis absorbs the energy, what can you conclude about cellular respiration? Well, if they're opposites and photosynthesis absorbs energy, then cellular respiration has to release energy, and it does in the form of ATP. Please start memorizing this equation today. Okay, it's time to start filling in your notes, so get those ready to fill out as the video proceeds. So pause the video as necessary so that you can fill out the information on your notes. But don't just fill out the notes. Make sure that you're understanding and trying to learn what is being said in the video. Okay, cellular respiration is the, and the overall purpose is ATP production. Respiration is the process of converting the energy stored in food, specifically in glucose, into ATP. 
and that ATP stores usable energy for cellular activities. And why is ATP so important? Cells use ATP to produce essential macromolecules such as lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids such as DNA and RNA, and proteins. ATP is also used for many cell activities including active transport. The equation for cellular respiration is as follows. C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gets converted into 6CO2 plus 6H2O and ATP. Circle and label glucose and oxygen as the reactants and circle and label carbon dioxide, water, and ATP as the products. So what kind of organisms do or carry out cellular respiration? Remember that all living things, including plants and animals, carry out cellular respiration. And why do they do this? Because ATP is needed to keep cells functioning and to make essential macromolecules. Cellular respiration begins with a process called glycolysis. Say that to yourself, glycolysis. One more time, glycolysis. And depending on the availability of O2, the products of glycolysis will take one of two pathways. One pathway is called aerobic respiration. And this pathway occurs in the mitochondria if oxygen is readily available. And this is the most efficient way to make lots and lots of ATP. Now think about aerobics. When a person is doing aerobic activity, they're breathing in a lot of oxygen gas to compensate for what their muscles are doing. So I want you to remember when I say the word aerobic, that implies the use of lots of oxygen gas. And this aerobic pathway actually is conducted over three separate steps. So aerobic respiration includes three processes, converting pyruvate, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. Now your biology book combines these two together as one process, but to make it a little more understandable, I'm breaking it down into two separate processes. Either way, they're both being done. And they're followed by the electron transport chain. Now the prefix an means without, and the name of the other pathway is anaerobic respiration. Can you guess what that means? Now anaerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm without any oxygen available. It makes no ATP at all, but what it does do is it provides NAD positive for glycolysis to keep making a little bit of ATP without oxygen present. This process of anaerobic respiration is also called fermentation. As a quick recap, the purpose of cellular respiration is to convert the energy stored in glucose into a usable form, and that usable form is ATP. If oxygen is available, the process will finish up in the mitochondria to make a lot of ATP. But when oxygen conditions are low, then glycolysis is followed by fermentation in the cytoplasm. And the only thing that that does it provides NAD positive so that glycolysis can continue making a little bit of ATP for the cell until oxygen conditions improve. All right, at this point, I want you to finish making, finish answering the questions following these notes. Then go to your biology book and I want you to read pages 221 to 222. And as you read, summarize the main points in the spaces provided on your packet. That's it for now. Have a good one.